All right, guys, today we are going to, via this video, learn a little bit about how to draw Lewis structures. And Lewis structures are a tool that we're going to use in order to determine things like the shape of molecules and the polarity of molecules. And so in order to do that, first of all, I want to bring up something called the octet rule because um, it's going to kind of govern a lot of things that we're going to be talking about as we do this. And the octet rule says that atoms in a compound basically try to achieve eight valence electrons. So let me write that down. And this is kind of like, you know, the fact that atoms want to be like noble gases. They're noble gas wannabes in terms of their electrons. And so having eight would be represent a full energy level. There are a couple of exceptions that you need to know. One of them you should already know, and that's hydrogen, because hydrogen wants to look like helium. And helium has two valence electrons. So hydrogen tries to look like helium and getting two electrons. Um, the other two are not as obvious. Beryllium wants four, and boron wants six. And so that's just something you have to keep in mind, these exceptions, as we go. All right, um, there's going to be two things we're going to talk about. The first is going to be just quickly ionic compounds, and we'll then go move to molecular compounds. So with ionic compounds, we can draw what we call an electron dot diagram, or a, a Lewis structure for that. And I'll just use the typical example of sodium chloride. And before we look at the compound of sodium chloride, let's consider sodium by itself and chlorine by itself. And if you do not have a periodic table near you, you really should pause for a second and grab one because we're going to be you know, looking at valence electrons and you need to see where that comes from. But with a Lewis structure, or what's often called a, an electron dot diagram, literally we are going to represent electrons as dots. So if you think about sodium, sodium has one valence electron. And so we're going to assign it one dot. Literally just a dot. It can go on the bottom, the top, either side. I just put it on the right side here. It doesn't matter. And if we think about chlorine, chlorine has seven valence electrons. And so when we do seven valence electrons, the electrons are always written in pairs, one per side, or two per side, really. Um, and then we can start doubling them up, kind of like the orbital diagrams. They get doubled up. And so in this case, I've got uh, two on three of the sides and then one on uh, the opposite side. And so it has seven valence electrons. When it forms sodium chloride, we know, because sodium wants to look like a noble gas, that it has only one valence electron, and it wants to lose this valence electron. So if it does that, it forms sodium with no valence electrons. It loses its dot. And to illustrate that it has a charge now, we put it in brackets with the charge on the outside. Now, chlorine has seven valence electrons. If you think about its electron configuration, you know, it ends in 3s2, 3p5. It wants to be 3p6. It wants another electron. Well, it gets that electron from sodium and the reaction between the two. And so it forms chlorine. And now instead of having seven dots, it has an additional one, which gives it a negative charge. So we put it in brackets with the charge on the outside. So that's just an example. And of course, you know, we remember that ionic compounds are really you know, op, a, a grouping or a crystal and structure of opposite charged particles making this kind of regular form and ends up being, you know, crystalline shape for that idea. You can do it for something like calcium chloride. In the case of calcium chloride, calcium normally has two valence electrons, which it would lose to form calcium with no valence electrons, so it would have no dots. Chlorine, each chlorine gains an electron and again becomes chlorine with now eight valence electrons, so it has an extra one. And you'll notice when I draw this that I am drawing the chlorines on either side of the calcium. And you might want to ask yourself the question, why didn't I draw it like this? And of course it's because these guys are going to repel. So something to consider. But that kind of just wraps up ionic compounds and how we might draw those. And we've got to consider the brackets and the charges and things like that. 
But where we're going to spend more of our time here is molecular compounds, because this is going to be the tool for helping us to figure out the polarity of molecules um, ultimately. And so what I want to do is, as we look at drawing electron dots, or Lewis structures, we are going to consider some really kind of quick and dirty rules here. Um, your book has some, you know, much more elaborate rules, but I'm just going to write some, some simple ones here for, for writing Lewis structures, and then I'll show you what I mean by each of them. Um, here they are. First, you've got to count up the valence electrons. Then from that, you're going to draw a symmetric arrangement of the atoms. And usually, it's going to have a center atom. Not always, but very often it will. Um, then you're going to draw in bonds, which are a pair of electrons, or in our case, a pair of dots. Then you will sprinkle. It's a very technical term here. Um, sprinkle the electrons to satisfy the octet rule, the one we just talked about, or the exceptions as needed. And then the fifth one is to check. And sometimes you will find that you need to go back again and try a double or a triple bond, which is sharing more than one pair of electrons. And so I'll show you examples of some of these. So there will be six examples I want to kind of whip through with you. One. Uh, we'll just do it one at a time, actually, but let me just kind of see if we can fit those on. All right, we'll start from the very simple. We'll start with methane, CH4. I'm going to go through each of the steps. Again, consult a periodic table. It will really help. First step, count the valence electrons. So carbon has four valence electrons. Make sure you know why, because it ends in 2s2, 2p2. And each hydrogen is one valence electron, but there are four of them. And so we're going to add that together, and we have a total of eight valence electrons. Then we're going to draw a symmetric arrangement, usually with a central atom. Carbon would be a great one here, because there's one of them, and four hydrogens. So we'll put hydrogens one on each side. Now, these are covalent bonds. Molecular compounds are covalently bonded, and so we're talking about sharing electrons. So we're going to draw a, a pair of electrons in between each of the, out the atoms to represent a shared pair of electrons. That's known as a single bond when we're sharing one pair of electrons between them. Okay, so we've drawn that in. Now the next step is to sprinkle the electrons so everybody obeys the octet rule. Well, hydrogen's an exception. So each hydrogen wants only two, and look, that hydrogen is sharing those two with the carbon, and this hydrogen is sharing those two, and so on and so forth. And carbon is sharing two, four, six, eight. It's sharing those eight with the hydrogens. So actually, it works out. And when I count my dots, I've got eight dots, and so this one's good. So that's methane. Next example, ammonia. I'm going to count the valence electrons. Nitrogen is 5, hydrogen is 1, and there's 3 of them. So I have a total of 8 again. And I'm going to draw a symmetric arrangement. You could put the hydrogen up here on top and, and maybe leave one of these out. It doesn't actually matter as long as you've got 3 hydrogens on the side. I'm going to draw in my bonds. So basically I've used 6 of my 8 electrons there. The hydrogens are already satisfied, they're sharing in two, but I need to sprinkle two more around nitrogen to help it satisfy the octet rule. And then count, and in fact, of course, I do have a total of eight dots, and so I'm good, and it works out. A little vocabulary. This, which is not involved in a bond, is called a lone pair of electrons, because it's not a bonding pair of electrons. All right, number three, good old-fashioned water here. Um, each hydrogen has one, and there's two, and then oxygen has. You might want to ask yourself, do you know how many valence electrons that has? But we're looking at eight again in total. Oxygen will be in the center. Whoa, that's a different form of water. Um, there we go. We've got our bonds drawn in, so we've used four of the eight. Oxygen still needs some more, two per side here. 
Oh, we used up all eight. We're good um, for this one. This one has two lone pairs of electrons. Notice. SO3. Figure out how many valence electrons there are. Pause it if you need to and figure it out. When you're done doing that, you should find that it has 24 total valence electrons. So we're going to go ahead and draw that structure and draw our bonds in. Sprinkle our electrons so everybody has eight. And then count it up to see how many you've got. So when you count the dots, you have 26 dots. But you're only allowed 24, so something is wrong. This is where we have to make sure you check. When you do that and something gets mucked up and you don't have the right number, go back and try a double bond. Try one double bond. If that doesn't work, try two. Try a triple bond. So what's a double bond? A double bond is where instead of pair sharing one pair of electrons, you share two. I just chose this oxygen because I felt like it. doesn't matter. could have been any of them. Now notice I don't have any electrons up here on sulfur because now sulfur is sharing these whoops, wrong pen. <laughs> now sulfur is sharing these four and these two and these two. So sulfur already has eight, so it doesn't get eight more. But this oxygen needs four more. Keep them in pairs. You could put them on the side or on the um, top and bottom. It doesn't matter. Now when we recount this up and you count all the dots, 2468, uh, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. Now I have 24, and so that works out. And so this one, the way it looks, actually looks like it has one double bond and two singles. In fact, this actually has what is called resonance. And so that's something that we need to bring up down the line. But I will mention just very briefly what I mean by that. Um, since this appears to have a double and two single bonds, when they actually do testing, they find out that all the bonds seem to be about the same. They don't seem to be like single bonds or double bonds at all. But in fact, that double bond seems to be spread out amongst all of those bonds. It's almost like they make, instead of a single and a double, like they're all one and a third bonds, not literally. So, you know, make sure that, you, you know, you ask a question about that in class. Okay, fifth one, carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide has 16 valence electrons. Maybe stop and make sure you know why it does. Carbon dioxide, when you try all single bonds, it doesn't work. How do I know? Because when I count that up, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, I get 20 valence electrons. So that's not a good one. And if you try a double bond, one, you get 18. So in fact, you have to try two double bonds. And when you do that, you get 16. All right, last one, an ion, sulfate. So with sulfate, when we add up the valence electrons, sulfur has six, each oxygen is six, and there's four of them. But the fact that there are two mi there's a two minus charge means there are actually two additional electrons there. If there was a plus charge, that would mean it would be one less electron. But that gives us a total of 32. So as I draw this structure out, and I draw my bonds in, and I sprinkle my electrons to satisfy the octet rule. I better count it, make sure that I'm good, and so count them up. If you count up all the dots, there are in fact 32 dots. But because this is an ion, think back to ionics, we've got to put it in brackets with the charge on the outside. So that wraps up Lewis structures. Good luck in class.